steam locomotive. Such a majestic machine. 50k an hour and a 1.2% grade. Okay, we're going to need all the speed we can get. Come on, come on. We can't stall. We can't stall. We got over 800 tons behind us. And we're attacking this hill with all our might right now. Oh, I can definitely hear the locomotive slowing down. I've got the power on full still. Oh, I can hear the wheels spinning. This 800 ton train is weighing us down. Are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? Uh, welcome back and thanks again for joining me for another video. This is Derail Valley Simulator once again and yes, uh, we seem to have a bit of a uh, bit of a situation here. We've got uh, quite a bit of steel at the moment. Uh, you can see here we've got some steel rolls, about 52 ton each carriage plus the weight of the carriage as well. Let me just take off this handbrake and watch it all go downhill. Just kidding. So what we're doing today is I thought uh, I would take the uh, steam locomotive for a little bit of a run because I haven't driven the steam locomotive properly since the derail simulator update has occurred uh, back at the end of June. So I thought I'd give it a bit of a go and just see what's changed with the steam locomotive. And you can see here that we've got, um, just checking these handbrakes, I'm pretty sure it's just the last car that has the handbrake on. You can see here that we've got quite a few of these carriages. We've got uh, seven of these steel roll carriages. And as we make our way towards the front of the train, eventually, that's how long this train is. See how long it's taking? <laughs> we've got another set, another seven carriages. These have steel slabs on them. So yeah, all up we're looking at, uh, I've done the calculations here, seven of each of these carriages. So we've got seven of these ones and seven of the steel rolls looking at about 819 ton for those counting at home so yeah plus the uh, weight of the engine as well so we're well into the 900 ton mark here we're basically closing in on a thousand ton today that we are going to attempt to basically haul with this lovely steam locomotive now this steam locomotive has been around for a little while in this game but as i said with this simulator update there's been many changes done to it previously i did run a few mods on the steam locomotive in the earlier version of this game but there's no mods currently that support this simulator update and probably won't need to run any mods hopefully I think they've done a good enough job of uh, updating the physics and the modeling of the coal and airflow and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and start the fire here just using my trusty lighter. With this simulator update you do not need to throw the lighter into the uh, coal box anymore. Now you'll note there that this thing really eats coal during this process. If you look at the uh, coal bed there it's moving down quite fast. Not sure if you can see that but Basically, I do need to keep shoveling like this, otherwise the fire will go out. So, just in these initial stages, and we're heating up the firebox and getting the steam pressure going. This aspect of the simulation is not entirely realistic. Let me just adjust the uh, draft here, the dampers. Because obviously in real life, firing up a steam locomotive from cold like this would probably take at least seven to eight hours to get it going. So, but we don't have that time right now. So in the interest of that, they've sped up the simulation of the coal and fire starting. But one thing they have improved quite a bit is the water gauge. And you'll see the water gauge physics as I drive. The water goes up and down and it's, it's quite terrifying actually how it does that. And you might be wondering why? Well, that's because they've now introduced boiler explosions as well. So if you let the water run too low, and this is your water injector lever here. If you let the water run too low and basically dry the boiler out, it will explode. The whole locomotive will explode. It'll eject you from the locomotive. You won't actually die in the game as such, but you will um, lose your locomotive and you have tubes and your whole locomotive will be a mess basically. Okay, I've just turned on the compressor there and the first knob I turned there was the lubricator. So they've added these two new devices and also this device up here, this is the generator. So this runs off steam pressure and allows things like your headlights and things like that, your side lights and all that to actually work. Oh, fire's going a bit low again. Let's add a bit more coal. 
and you can hear the brakes are charging up as well the hissing sounds as you can see there brake pipe charging and the main res is charging up as well just make sure that this handbrake is off so the brakes are off on the locomotive almost once the brake pipe is charged up you can hear the compressor just thumping away there headlights on Okay, so let's just keep feeding this beast because she is hungry today. Okay, so boiler pressure is looking good. With this with this damper here, I'm just going to increase this all the way to the top. Easy way to remember the dampers is if you pull it all the way up, you get a big high fire. If you push it all the way down, you get a low fire. Okay. Now, we're going to be leaving here out of Harbour and Town today. We're heading in a different direction today. And I'm just going to show you that on the map here. So at the very bottom right hand corner of the map you can see HB. And what I'm going to do is what I like to do is just chuck the map down here so I can show you guys a little bit better, guys and girls. So at HB you can see there we're going to be heading out and we'll be going through this set of points. And then here's the big hill basically. We'll be climbing this section here. And then we'll be going straight through and around. And then here's a nice straight section which is mostly level I believe. We'll be getting some good speed here, I'm sure. Through some more points and then around to the steel mill. So that's going to be our run today. And I'll probably leave it at that just to keep it as a nice little compact video. This section here is going to be the worst. And obviously I've previously gone up that section on the other side as well. But whichever way you leave Harbour and Town, HB, there's always going to be inclines it seems. So... Yeah, there's inclines coming out of this place, and that's what makes it really fun. Okay, boiler pressure's looking good. Let's get on the whistle. What do you all think of the new whistle? I think some people I've heard don't like the new whistle. I don't really have a uh, preference either way. I don't mind. I think the old one did have more of a, of a twang to it. A little bit more of a, a ghastly noise, I guess. Okay, we're at 12 bar for the boiler, and our water level is looking good. You can see the water level increases as the water heats up and steam is generated, which is very cool as well, all part of the new physics. And that's the apply for the brake. There's also a running position for the brake, which I've just put it in there. You can see the red needle shows your brake application, and there's release. So once again, once the red needle drops to zero, you know that the brakes are released. And then once it's done that as well, um, there is a running position too. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put the reverser into full forward. And keep feeding the fire a little bit. Oops, 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 hang on. We don't want the locomotive brake on, we want that off. Okay, let's open the cylinder drains. It's important to do that when starting, otherwise you cause all sorts of damage with this update as well. It does model that kind of wear and tear. So the cylinder drains for the first few chuffs, and then we'll close up the cylinder drains after that. Let's see if we can't get this load, this 800 ton plus load moving. We're on level ground here, so it shouldn't be too difficult to get this thing moving. And I do love how they've modeled the, you can see there that the jets of steam exiting the bottom of the cylinder from two different locations, front and rear of the cylinder. And you've got here this chest pressure indicator as well. It's basically showing you the amount of power you're putting into the cylinders, the amount of steam pressure. So the higher that indication means the more power locomotive is outputting. It will never exceed what your boiler pressure is. But obviously the higher that is on your on your chest pressure, the more chance of wheel slip as well, but the more power you're generally putting down. You can see there the water's right up the top of the gauge there, so we don't want to add any more water here. I did hear that the water gauge only models about 45 to 75% of the water level anyway. So even if the water gauge is showing full, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got a full boiler. Okay, got nice grey smoke here. Smoke colour is modelled as well. 
So if you've got really black, dark smoke, it means that you're not running an efficient fire. Just going to go ahead and make sure our damper is set correctly here. What we can probably do is we can set it so that it's not quite full. So we can bring it down just a few notches from the top. But we do need quite a bit of power now because we are coming up. What we need to do basically as we leave harbour and town here is we need to get as fast as we can go without derailing. So I'm going to just wound back on the reverser there. Ooh, give it a bit of power but not too much. You can hear that the wheels are slipping. Okay, so I just want to accelerate to at least 40k an hour here. Whistle. I think the limit is 40k's through here anyway. The reason why I want to get a good run up is because we've got a hell of a hill coming up and we can stall this whole thing if we're not careful. So when you can see the sparks flying out of the chimney like that, you know that you're really pushing this thing hard. Once again, just doing a sandbox run today, not doing a job as such. And there's the old engine shed. We've got a few uh, spare locomotives in there in case we bin this one. <laughs> okay, so we're heading off to the right. So just want to make sure that we've got enough speed, but not too much. We'll keep it around the 40k an hour mark. We don't want to go too fast around this curve. And I'm just playing with keyboard and mouse today, no VR, once again. Okay, once we get around this curve, I'm going to go full throttle. In fact, I'm going to do it right now because... 50k an hour and a 1.2% grade. Okay, we're going to need all the speed we can get. Come on, come on, we can't stall, we can't stall. We got over 800 tons behind us. And we're attacking this hill with all our might right now. Because we're going to need all the speed and power we can get. So I've got the throttle open fully. And hopefully we can... We're actually, incre we're actually in exceeding the speed limit slightly, but that's fine. We need this momentum. We need to charge up this hill. I'm going to turn the sanding off. I had it on just now to avoid wheel slip, but I don't think we need it right now. Up we go, up we go, come on, come on. Don't want to stall. Oh, I can hear the wheels spinning. Let's put the sanding on. Oh, I can definitely hear the locomotive slowing down. I've got the power on full still. This 800 ton train is weighing us down. Are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? What is levels doing fine? I think we might have made it. I think we might have made it. Once we get over this section here, it's level ground. just quickly add some more coal and quickly close up. I'm just thinking from my Microsoft Train Simulator days. Yes, that's how old I am. If you didn't close the uh, uh, the firebox whilst entering a tunnel, you could experience fatal blowback. And I don't think that's modeled in this game, but I still do it anyway. Just adding some water here. I think we might be out of the woods on that hill. We have basically made it, so that's good. Just going to open up the firebox now that we are clear of the tunnel again. And we are adding a bit of water right now and adding a bit more coal. This thing really keeps you on your toes, I must say, because you're basically doing the job of two people, the fireman and the driver. definitely putting some load on this thing today. You can see our steam uh, blow off valve I guess. Safety valve is blowing off there. That means that we have an excess of steam. 
So we could probably close down the damper a little bit. The steam locomotive, such a majestic machine. Are starting to slow down again. I think this is another hill. Yep, another hill. Let's just put a little bit more water in there because. I like to see the water level a bit higher. When climbing a grade, your water level should be a bit higher because most of the water is back towards you. So if you're climbing a grade and your water level marker is quite low, you know that you're in trouble because once you go onto a level or even a downhill, all the water will rush to the front of the boiler and you'll expose the firebox. And that's when you could have, oh, got some wheel spin there. That's when you could have a explosion. So, those boiler explosions, you do not want to experience them. <laughs> I couldn't imagine what that's like in VR as well. So far, so good though. Okay, we'll just lay off the water there for a sec. Not quite coasting here, but... got less power on so let's see how we're going on the map here okay we made some progress we're coming up to a sharp left hander and then we want to make sure we go straight through those points we do not want to bear to the right hand side so we'll keep an eye out for those points soon let's put a bit more power on add a bit more coal you can see our, our smoke there is nice and grey, so we've got a we've got quite an efficient fire burning right now, which is how you want it. You don't want a dark black smoke. You want this nice kind of grey smoke. So it's really cool how they've modelled the smoke, and even the sparks flying out the chimney. I'm not sure if those sparks can, uh, actually cause any damage, but. Normally that does mean that you're working the locomotive hard, so... I must say the steam locomotive is my my old favourite and I'll probably come back to this in future videos as well. Whoop! Tunnel! Close up firebox. So yes, with the boiler pressure you don't want it to be less than about 10 when you're doing these heavy, heavy hill climbs and things like that. putting a little bit more water in the boiler. This thing does consume water quite a lot during these heavy hill climbs. So you don't want to run out of water with this thing, with any steam locomotive. <laughs> just back off the reverser here. Put a little bit, whoops, just hopped off the train there. Quick, got to get back on. <laughs> Derail Valley. Derailing myself here off the train. Yes, yeah, so the reverser has a profound effect on how much power and torque you're putting down and how much steam you're using as well. So you don't want to keep the reverser in the full full position, full forward position for too long. Once you start moving, I'd like to wind back on that reverser quite aggressively. Okay, hang on, let's have a look. Oh no, we've got the points coming up. Quick, quick, quick. We've got to check. We've got to check. Uh, get the comms radio because we might need to flip these over. Oh, just in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. Could have gone off in the wrong direction. And I tell you, that would have been quite annoying. I don't think it's a grade as such, or if it is, it's a small one. But. Stopping this train, reversing it, and then starting again would have been annoying, that's for sure. So you can see there the halfway mark on the reverser. 
So we're about we're between the full and halfway cutoff on the reverser. So we're at about I don't know what would you say about 40% valve gear, I guess. For those of you who understand that. We're in like third gear in a five speed gearbox, I guess you could say. I'm just gonna bring down the dampers here. Just a few notches from the top. Because oh a water level, water level see that's the danger zone right there. That if you let that go too far, the whole thing will explode like a bomb. So just bear that in mind, see that water level is kind of dropping. You want to make sure that as you go over the crest of any hills and start level or downhill, that you've still got enough water there. Just coasting now. And if we go out into the uh, exterior view here, you can see the lovely steam locomotive just making its way, cutting its way through Derail Valley's wondrous landscape. Birds are singing today. One of these days I might do a nighttime run in the rain maybe and put a heavy load behind and just see how we go. You can see that the colour of that smoke there was looking just fine as well. Water level's looking happy, let's just close the injector or just leave it slightly open. I like to leave it slightly open so it just trickles water in as well. You can see there that we are more or less coming up to the straight section track so we're laughing at the moment no problems we just be going on this straight section and then through a set of points and then bearing off to the right and then more or less we'll be making sure we head straight on into the steel mill so we started there we are here we're about halfway through more or less You, don't, you want to manage your fire so that you're not adding additional coal for no reason. And I've just put the, put the dampers right down. And you can see our firebox temps, normally they're around the 1000 degree mark when you've built up a heavy fire. So I don't need a firebox so hot right now. So hot right now. <laughs> uh, Alright, 120k now limit and dropping. That's fine. We're not going to touch our speed, we'll leave it where it is for the moment. Actually, we might have to get on the brake shortly. Don't want to let it get away from us. 90 now. I don't think we need any more coal in the box. Speed's running away a little bit, we're getting up to 60 here. And boiler's dropping back to about almost 11 bar, we're about 11 and a half bar at the moment. Nice and happy. Nowhere near the full pressure, so this is how you basically want to manage your locomotive. Okay, we're coming up to those points, so. Let's get ready on the brake. Let's apply a bit of brake. Actually, I, uh, <laughs> I said I was going to put it in running and I didn't in the end. Let's back off the throttle completely, add a bit of brake. Take the red needle up to about two and then bring it back to running. So we don't want to jam on the brakes. See that? We're holding the red needle at two on the brake gauge there. And we'll just release it because we are going to slow down quite a bit if we don't. I just wanted to temper the speed a little bit, not too much. A lot of this stuff 
is knowing your routes. So I really recommend running these routes first. If you're going to play this game, choose an easy locomotive and an easy light load first. Do these runs. Just get to know the lay of the land first before you tackle something like this. Because otherwise you'll find yourself trying to do all these things in the locomotive and not knowing the curves ahead of you and all that kind of stuff and the grades can really be a handful, that's for sure, especially with the steam locomotive. I can't count how many times I've done this route or derail finally, so it does help to have that route knowledge. Okay, release the brakes. Just wanted to go through those points at a nice sane speed and we've achieved that, so off the brakes, on the whistle, and now, because I've had the throttle closed for some time, I'm just going to open the cylinder drains there. Just in case any condensate has built up whilst we've had the throttle closed. Always good to do that for a few troops. Just keep those drains open for a while. Back onto the power. And then close up the drain once again, once we've got a nice dry cylinder, or cylinders. Play with our dampers a bit more there. Don't want to increase them fully, you can see our water levels are dropping a little bit. And as I said, that water gauge does not show full and empty, it's just somewhere in between the boiler, so more of an indication. But if you see that there's no water on the gauge, you should definitely take action. Especially when you're heading on a level ground and slightly downhill. Okay, so we do have 90 speed limit ahead of us. We are getting closer to the steel mill, we should be there in just a few moments, so... Aside from that, that gradient in the beginning, I think this has been quite a milk run otherwise. Always keen to hear your thoughts as well, so do let me know what you thought, what you think so far. Nice little run in the steam locomotive today. That first hill climb though was, was definitely a little bit nail biting. That's where you've got to make sure, because it's very easy to stall a locomotive coming out of harbour and town like that. If you've got a heavy load behind you and you don't have enough speed, doesn't matter how powerful your locomotives are or locomotive is, you can end up in trouble. So always bear that in mind. Okay, we've got a nice minus 1.8% descent here. So keep the fire nice and low. We do have a set of points coming up, so we'll just make sure that they are pointed in the correct direction. We'll be able to see that shortly. You can see the steel mill there, and... Yes, yes, we are all good on that. Our points are set correctly, so... All good to go through here at the 60 km an hour limits. not doing 60. Oops, jumped off the train again. Always handy that you can just pop back on like that, isn't it? Otherwise, I don't quite know what we'd do. So you can see there that I've been tempering the speed a little bit with the brake. Always good to keep the speeds in check. So now it's our arrival into the steel mill rather noisily. And I do realize once again that I've bought cargo back to the steel mill that doesn't need to be there. <laughs> the steel mill creates steel, it doesn't need steel. Once again, this is just a sandbox run, so it's not an actual job in the game that I've done for in-game cash. It's just a experimental run to see how the steam locomotive can haul 800 ton plus from harbour and town. 
with this new uh, simulator update and I must say it's done quite well but yeah again like I said before do make sure you're getting your momentum up on those grades because you definitely need it one thing I could have done was put like a shunter or something behind us and just operate remotely perhaps and have a helper locomotive behind but didn't need that this time but obviously yes did need that momentum so that's more or less it folks I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this handbrake what I might do is I may as well you can see here that we've got our load successfully delivered to steel mill doesn't need to be here but that's another story the steam locomotive has done a good job today so what I might do is I might just detach the load here and do a run just up to the engine shed ahead of us so I might just do that now actually so we'll just come in here and do the needful make sure we close our brake valves we'll leave that one open that's fine once that vents to atmosphere that will engage the air brakes anyway we do have one handbrake on as well which is fine and we'll just hop back in We've only closed the air brake, air valve on our tender. So that will ensure that we don't bleed all our brakes off. Okay, let's separate this train. Let's go full forward. Make sure the cylinder drains are open, as you can see there. And I think I just heard the hoses separate there. A little bit more coal here. Keep the fire going. We don't need a lot of fire. We just want to keep it going. I just pushed the damper all the way down, as you probably noticed. Whoops. Our tender handbrake was still on. That's better. No wonder why she didn't want to move off there. Just take a little run up here to the engine shed, the tutorial shed as it were, and then we'll end the video for today. So up here you can also check the water tender uh, water level as well. I remember doing that in VR mode eons ago, kneeling down in the in the old study and doing the gesture. It's, it's quite fun actually to operate this locomotive in VR mode. And I may well do that again in the future. It just takes it out of you operating in VR, it really does. Maybe I'm getting old. <laughs> but I'm thankful you can actually play this game in non-VR mode with just the computer screen as well. And mouse and keyboard. Okay, so. Picked up a bit of speed here. I want to make sure that the junction points ahead of us are set correctly and I think we can probably do that better from... no it's not. So let's go ahead and... yeah, we can do that from this side. But yeah, those points were not set for the engine sh shed, as they normally are not. They're normally set for the main line, so... Let's get on the brakes here a little bit because we are going quite fast. And this engine shed comes up rather quick. I think we'll stop short of the engine shed here and we'll shall call it a day. So thank you for watching if you made it this far. Really enjoy your viewership once again and please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already if you're enjoying these videos, if you want to see more like this in the future. I'm very much open to your feedback as well once again as, as I do have as I have been saying lately. Please utilize the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on how I went today. How's my driving? 1-800 kind of thing. <laughs> I think we might have too much water in the boiler. Yeah, I'm just making sure. That's kind of a interesting thing to read the color of the water gauge there. When it's blue like that, I'm pretty sure it's full of water. <laughs> I hope. I'm just gonna blow down some of the excess water here. And you can see that's vented out the side there. There you go. Yeah, you can see the water level is, yep, nice and full there. Just brought it down a little bit. Yes, and we can bring down some of the fire too if there's too much fire. We can blow that down using that lever. 
But yes, that is basically it. We have made it and we haven't blown up the steam locomotive today, which is always handy, isn't it? It's handy not to blow things up. Sometimes you just want things to work. So thank you once again for watching. And once again, as I mentioned before, just let me know any feedback as well in the comments. I'm gonna go ahead and just stable this locomotive up. Let's have a quick look here in this, uh, this old shed here. This is the tutorial shed where you do start the game. And yeah, I do recall this one. Oh, it's already almost four o'clock in the game. Time passes. So I'm thinking for some of my future runs, I do want to get into the career mode and I really should probably just start a career from scratch even and just see how we go. Because I want to um, just turn off the lubricator there and I'll go ahead and turn off this uh, compressor and generator as well whilst I yammer away here. But yes, I think probably time to start a career mode. What do you guys think? What do you guys and girls think? Do a career mode, start with the shunter, build up the old cash in the wallet and uh, do some jobs and uh, try not to derail and, and lose all my money. I think that'll be a, a fun series of videos to do now that I've I've done a few of these little sandbox videos so far. Unless you want me to do more sandbox videos, do let me know once again. Uh, but yes, this is uh, sandbox or career mode. It's always fun in Derail Valley, I think. And I do enjoy the ambience that they've put into, into this game as well. Hmm, got like a little observatory up there. Anyway, I think we'll uh, we'll close it off here. Thanks so much for watching once again. I know I've said that probably a million times already, but I really do appreciate it. And I really do appreciate your feedback as well. So whatever it may be in the future, whatever video it is, uh, I'll catch you all in the next one.